Great review time. Today we've got Trumpeter's brand new tool, 135th scale Russian 1K17, whatever. Okay, this is a uh, sort of what if, not really a what if, it did exist. There's only two ever built. Now this is going back um, a couple of decades now when laser technology I think was gonna be the big thing. Um, they were gonna be firing lasers, not so much destroying things, but definitely uh, ruining optical sensors, things like that, and generally causing habit on the battlefield. Um, obviously the British tried it, we know the Americans tried it, and obviously I wasn't sure of the Russians, but obviously this proves it, they tried it as well. As I said, there's only two prototypes ever built. Uh, I do believe one is no longer with us, the other one is in a museum. So it's quite a odd type of, uh, obviously, bit of armour for Trumpeter to bring out, but let's face it, they always do bring out the odd stuff. So generally, having a look at it, as you can see, it's a pretty mean looking beast, uh, with its optical sensors on the front and everything else, and I'm assuming that's sort of your T90, uh, sort of lower hull that runs it. Okay, so looking around on the box, we obviously we've got a couple of schemes. We've got a little bit about this one, uh, which using the uh, MTSAS chassis, uh, which was a battery uh, laser projectiles mounted uh, projectors mounted on the turret. It was developed by the Soviet Union in order to disable the optical electrical equipment of enemy missiles, ground and aerial vehicles. Basically what we were saying. Um, so you've got different schemes just down there. We've got it around here. So there's your kit number 05542. Okay, and we've got some other little camouflage markings there. We can see we've got various options for markings because obviously it's a bit of a what if, but it's nice to put those in there. And we've got a little bit of photo etch as well. So generally, very nice. Now, to be honest, the box feels absolutely rammed full of stuff which it is, okay. So, first impressions is I've got a lot of plastic in here, okay. In fact, we've got, uh, got a lot of plastic in here, okay. So if we can just hopefully get to the old instructions first. All right, put that somewhere, sorry, we're tied up today. So we've got the usual bump, no doubt, inside. That'll be all about master tools bits, okay. So, in with our instructions, okay. Usual uh, trumpeter one, so obviously we've got your part call outs uh, down on the sprues and everything else like that. Uh, not quite sure what that is, talking about it. So usual things, obviously we're talking, uh, obviously the sprocket, the idler wheels and the road wheels obviously going together, as you can see down there, into the lower hull. So it looks like we've got a, a nice one piece of lower hull, just the front plates going on on there. And then obviously adding the details as you make your way through. Pretty standard with most of your, your tanks. So we've got the actual suspension, uh, the track units going in there, as you can imagine, both of those and all the lumps bumps uh, you can imagine that usually go on there. We've got the return uh, wheels obviously being put on, the idle wheels and everything else as you can put in. We've got like a blade system going on the front here. It looks like a piece of uh, extra armor or something else going down there just like that. Then we've got the top part of the hull is going to go in. So it's interesting it's not the usual over the side bits that drop down. It's just the top area down there. Periscopes, uh, got a little bit of photo etch which is quite nice. You can see some of these being pointed out going down in there. Driver's hatch. Okay, and then obviously you've got the exhaust systems and things like that coming off, and then the headlight guards, all the usual bits and pieces, and then the top half going down on there. Photo etch for the rear grills, as we can imagine. Uh, we've got the little angle parts, obviously the water looks like a bow plate goes in there. Okay, and then we've got the side skirts being put on. Usual things, we've got the storage bins and all the bits and pieces going on the side, which is pretty normal. Some nice details on all of those. Okay, and again, some more storage bins being put on. Then we've got the track system. Now it looks like, just seeing how this one goes together, uh, ding, ding, ding. I don't know if they're actually a click fit or they're a glue fit, but definitely we've got the actual clink, uh, link system going down on here. Looks like we don't have an overlocking plate. Uh, something maybe a little bit to have a look at. Usual thing then, cables, things like that going down there. That's gonna complete your lower hull section. And then obviously going on with the tech section just down on here, right the way through, the batteries, obviously you've got the, the sides, I presume you can probably have them open or closed if you want to do, to protect the sensors. Both the batteries going in at the front. Got a top machine gun uh, for self-protection. 
uh, and for aircraft, anti-aircraft gun, things like that just down there as well. And then obviously just the small cleats and handles and things like that being fitted to that one all over. And then it's just a case of actually got a locking top down onto this one to put it on the top. So you can see something a little bit futuristic, something a little bit different, as you can imagine. This is what you're gonna end up with at the end of it. That usual brilliant uh, Russian camo scheme uh, with the black, green and the tan. Very, very nice down there. Your usual color out. So we've got Mr. Hobby, some Valero, Model Masters, Tammy and Humbrol. And they're only gonna get the one option. So in the bags, trusty knife, okay. Okay, so we just sort of work our way through down here. As I said, this isn't the type of kit I would normally rush out and buy to get one. The reason of getting sometimes the newer kits, for my point to review to you guys, is to see if they've made a progression. If there's anything slightly different to it, anything that feels different as it's a brand new tool kit, it's 2015 kit and everything else, so it's interesting to see what it is. My first impression is the plastic doesn't feel like Trumpeter's standard plastic. This is very reminiscent of Hasegawa. It's that real sharp, sort of chinky, it feels very sharp, crisp, uh, and everything else. And looking down here, usual thing, the details seem to follow that along as well. If we just drop down this top cam just a little bit. Okay, just to get it in there. So as you can see, we've got some various details. This is the lower part, but as we're looking around here at the uh, old optical sensors and things like that, down on these, as you can see, they're actually looking very, very nice. Okay, and the bins, the details are quite sharp to touch, which is something I sort of look for now. It's the sharpness, if it's soft and horrible, but if it's crisp, sharp, you should be able to feel it being quite scratchy as you feel your way over it. All of those look very, very nice. Uh, ejector pins, things like that, are all completely out of the way, so we don't have to worry about those. They're all on the blank side. But generally, very nicely done, some nice detail. No sign of flash, no sign of sink marks or anything else like that whatsoever. It looks to be a very clean, crisp, and definitely a sharper type kit. Okay, so down here, interesting we've got a gun barrel. Where would that go? I'm assuming we've actually got a two kit in here. Now, as I say, apologies guys, as you know, I'm not an armor guy, so I wouldn't know, but I'm assuming the reason we've got a gun down here, we've got multi-parts, but as you might be able to see, we've got a gun barrel, we've got a turret, and all the other bits and pieces that go down here. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can all jump on me and now say what all this is. Uh, and the reason we've got all of that in here, but um, if we see a turret in a minute, we know we've got two kits in one box, which I'm not sure is a mistake, or it's just because there's common parts on there and don't. It could be a reason, and obviously not being able to read the old uh, uh, Chinglish, uh, this down here could be parts not used, which would make sense, because if that is H, no, that's G. So G and H, we reckon, and none of them are used. So I'm just gonna roughly work this out. Number four, G4, is not used. So this area down here, as you can see, is all the parts not used. So obviously they're using the lower hull and all the bits and pieces, but we have got some common ones all the way over. Okay, so there we go. That solves that little mystery. So as you can see, We've got more parts down here. This is on F, looking very clean, very sharp, and all the rest of it. Again, I'm thinking we're getting multiple parts in here, looking at them, they don't look like they're all for it. I'm thinking, obviously, the top turret is just an afterthought onto the lower part as we're working our way through. Sorry, I haven't done my homework on this one. Okay, so we've got the side skirts. Again, very nicely done, very sharp, very crisp. All the detailing looks pretty good. A little bit softer on that area there. Uh, again, we've got a log obviously lying down here, so we're thinking this is separate parts. It'd be interesting to see if obviously the tooling on this part is the same as the rest of it. It looks pretty good to me. Um, if anything though, we're just comparing the two. See, the plastic all seems to be the same. I don't know. I think we have got two different types of plastic here though. This one does feel sharper, lighter, crispier than this one. This one feels more sort of flexible. I don't know, I could just be reading into this the wrong way, you know, where your mind's telling you it's two separate ones. But this plastic sprue feels different to this one. So I'm thinking here, this is obviously the upgraded part. This is the one we're using and everything else. These parts here are not, and it's from a different kit. 
Okay, something a little bit weird going on here with the parts, but generally, as you can see, looking around, no problem. It's just that this isn't as sharp and not as crisp as that other one. So I'm, that's why I'm sort of in between minds about what we've got going on down here. Okay, so this guy over here, again, not too bad. The details and everything else, no sign really of flash and everything else. This hatching across the top turret, things like that, all very nice, clean, crisply molded and everything else like that. Can't see any problems with it whatsoever. All seems to be pretty good. Tracks we'll have a look at in a moment. <clears throat> so my comment about probably being a T90 chassis is obviously well out. This is something a little bit earlier. Okay, so looking at all the small parts, as you can see down here, we've got a duplicate, all looking very nice. The way these handles are all molded, they all seem to be very nicely done. As you can see, all of these down here, extremely fine detail, some very nice touches down in there. If we put it the right way up, we can have a glide round in the old close up. As you can see, some really nice stuff on all of that. It does seem to be very, very nicely done. Can't see any problems. No signs of flash, miss molds or anything else. The burring seems to be very minimal as well. So that's actually a very nice touch. Okay, road wheels and the suspension. So, okay, and duplicates down here. So as you can see, nice to see we've got actual tire detail going on. We've got a little bit of a center seam running down those, but that's not so much of a problem. But generally, as you can see, all of these on sprue A, very nicely done. No problem with those at all all very good so we haven't even got any ejector pins at all on the wheels which is a nice touch and on these return wheels as well nicely detailed things like that and the suspension as i said no real massive burring between them either very easy clean up very nicely done that's going to be a dupe okay and then down in here okay Okay, so as you can see, you've got the usual bit of tape on the top. Nice to have these parts protected. Okay, so the usual bits. I'm gathering this has probably got a lot on here. We're not gonna use it. Just looks like an upper turret part uh, and the way you've got hatches and various things. So take your pick out of all of that lot. Very nicely protected though, as you can see on all of those parts, looking pretty good. Now, uh, <clears throat> And these we have, okay, this is probably going to be a definitely a new part because this is our top turret. Okay, very plain as you can imagine, it is literally a box. There is obviously parts to go on here, but some nice, again, yeah, quite sharp, detailed parts on the back of these. No problem with it at all. Looking pretty much the part, all of that, all the way around. Okay, and then. Top. Again, some nice details on all of these. This is definitely, obviously, you know, I know you're all screaming at the screen now saying, yeah, of course it is, Bill. I don't know it. I don't know this kit at all. But we've definitely got a kit of two halves down here because this is a lot softer plastic. It's more flexible, certainly, than the stuff we've seen with the other, the newer parts. So that's obviously what we're doing here. It's a bit of a reboxing with an upgrade. Okay, but generally, it does look very nice. Can't see any problems with it. The welding seam lines look very nicely, crisply well done, uh, and all the rest of it. So generally, all of this is pretty nice indeed. An actual lower hold, a little bit of steel or brass cable down in here, I should say. Masquerading as steel. Nice little touch to get that in the bag as well, because it's pretty much in scale for what you would want. That's nicely done. And then we've got the lower hole down on here. Yes, yeah, the S2S19 uh, S19 lower hull, obviously. But as you can see, it doesn't look too bad. A little bit softly molded, but generally all the details you could want are here. So there's no problem with these at all. Some nice details and all of this right the way over, as you can see. Okay, so not too bad at all. Set of wheels, idlers, we won't bother getting those out of the bag and all the rest of it we can see down there. Our track system, it's only because I want to see how this works. Okay, inundated with bags down here. Make some space. Okay, so 
so this is our track system as it looks in and our mounting plates and all the rest of it just trying to work out how this all goes together I assume you have to glue it together still because I can't actually see a hook and loop system on this one or anything else I'm pretty sure this is just gonna go into each other and then we glue it down onto this one to give you equal distances and everything else it's just that I can't see just poof a couple little ones out just to have a play with Let's grab two of these, okay, just to see how they're going to sit and fit. I'm just going to tie a little bit of clean up just to make them go better. The track itself, this stuff is very soft, it's bending literally just during cutting uh, and everything else like that. <coughs> We're just trying to see how this would in theory work so it sits down there like that and then we are guessing that this one then would come in like this and then would sit in so that one goes in and then this one goes in but there's no actual way of it locking together so what we're saying by this is this isn't like uh you know we've seen with meng and things like that where they will lock together what you've got to do is actually put it down here get them down like this and then you'd probably come along with your extra thin and tap it in trouble with that is getting it to bend round and all the rest of it for actually going around the road wheels but it will definitely give you a start on it of actually getting this one all together but unfortunately it's definitely not a lockable working track system these are just literally a simple push fit all the way through so <clears throat> a little bit disappointing shall we say but generally what do you expect uh clear parts in here we're not expecting any mass miracles just talking periscopes various things okay so we've got your obviously for the lights behind obviously back color them and all the rest of it through for the optical systems on there periscopes things like that pretty straightforward we've got photo etch pretty standard as you can imagine so we've got grills down there a couple of other bits all your handles which is a nice touch to replace them all in photo etch give them a lot more scale effect some grilling work things like that that's all very nice just the one sheet and we've got the decals we can see them down in here they are literally as you can see just all the numbering system so you've got one to nine four times over um sorry five times over so you can make up any code numbers or any sort of reference numbers you actually wanted to make on this one so there we go there you go that's have it something totally different haven't seen anything like it before obviously it is a kit of two halves so we've got an older kit with a new upgrade having the top system on there as i said something a little bit different if you like your what ifs or you want to do something you know a little bit out of the ordinary to make up your armor collection then this is the one for you so there we go that's the trumpeter uh 135 scale of 1k 17 shizzy